All right, everybody, welcome to the crossover that you have all been waiting for. It is the Avalanche. It is the Lightning. It's my man Shaggy Von Doom. It's my man Mixtape, Mr. Adam Denker. We got hats. We got beards. Let's do this thing. Your Locked On Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, welcome to this special crossover Stanley Cup edition of the Locked On Avalanche and Locked On Lightning podcasts. I am Chris Maselli. He is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. We are with Locked On Avalanche, and we got my good buddy. I call him Mixtape, Mr. Adam Denker from Locked On Lightning. How are we feeling, gentlemen? You, you want to don't all first talk guy? at once. Holy crap. Am, <laughs> no. I, am I the one who's going to bring the energy for this one? Go ahead. Well, no, it's it's I've it's very – the excitement is building. Granted, it's been over a week since the Avalanche have clinched their spot in the Stanley Cup final. So you've been doing everything possible and, like, grabbing onto everything to keep you going. So it's it's about time to get this game going, and I'm so excited for game one tonight. Yeah, uh, I, I can't say that I've had the the – the, the long layoff to, to kind of get things in order in terms of my mental clarity for this upcoming series. Uh, but, you know, I have to say, and this is nothing against the Rangers, more so against the fans, I guess. But, um, yeah, you were, around around you were <laughs> around game five, I, I think like Lightning fans, because we we kind of felt like there was never any danger of losing that series, even down to oh So after game five, at least my my thought process was all right let's just get this over with because let's let's play the series everybody else wants to see play and and you know chris and i uh, uh, our listeners know that we we host the lock on nhl show together and and we we kind of we called i think everybody else called this but everybody called this back in august when we were talking about preseason uh predictions and all that and it, it's finally good to have it come to fruition because I think Chris, even you and I have been talking about this for a couple of years now. I know that this is, it's all been leading towards this. We've joked about it because we've been doing that. We've been hosting the Thursday uh, locked on NHL for a couple of years now. And, yeah. and we've joked about it. It seems like every year and uh, it, it's, it's never a guarantee on who's yeah. in the final. And the fact that, well, you know, our, our, our two teams and I talked to you other than Kyle, um, probably most of anybody in the network. So <clears throat> the fact that our teams are here, um, I think it just it, it's poetic on on many levels. One for the NHL because this is going to be, I think, a, a very highly watched series. And yeah. personally, because like I said, you and I talk quite often. So I, and for people that don't know, and people maybe who are new to like the Locked On universe, especially like our shows. As long as Locked On has been in existence for the NHL side, they started with the NBA and the NFL, and then they brought on, after a couple years, they brought on baseball and hockey. Ever since Locked On has been with hockey, all they know is Adam Denker winning Stanley Cups. Mm. There's never been another champion in in the yeah look at him in, in the in the <laughs> world of Locked On. So it's it's even more reason why you know, we, we need to take you guys out. I was going to yeah. say, I, I, I think everyone on the locked on side, at least the NHL side, you are and, hated, you are, yeah, hated. which is fine. I, I love playing the villain, uh, you know, but just one snap and it goes back to the things were, you know, the way things were. And, and that's okay, the lightning winning a third yeah. Stanley cup, yeah. but <laughs> I'm excited to talk about this series because listen, I, I, I think from, and, and I guess we could jump right in right here with it. I, I think I'm more excited for this than for any matchup that the Lightning have had over the past two years with the Stanley Cup, just because, you know, you had like Dallas in the bubble, which to me at least, and I'm sure some people in that moment of time thought like, all right, they're just on a good run. There's really no player on this team that is scary. And then you fast forward to Montreal and it's kind of like the same thing. You have guys here and there who could contribute, but never really a guy that could hurt you consistently on a nightly basis. And now we have Colorado where everybody on that team could hurt you on a nightly basis. It's not just, you know, this guy here, this guy maybe here. It's this is, and, and Chris said it, I 
distinctly remember on an episode of Locked on NHL a couple of weeks ago, I guess it was probably the last time we we hosted because it's, it's been a month, um, <laughs> that... <laughs> <laughs> that we, we've been neglecting our, our other our, uh what we need to do for locked on but it's exactly understandable, understandable. Yeah. um but it, it's this is really a mini all-star game and and it's mm. one of those series where i'm i'm excited about it because finally the lightning get to have that test that big heavyweight battle against another team who is in some ways their equivalent in terms of level and talent in the Western Conference. And Adam, that was something I wanted to ask you right off the hop. Um, off the, the heels of Kale McCarr's quote today about the Lightning are about to become a dynasty and the Avalanche are looking to create a legacy. The outcome of this series, like whether it be the Lightning or Colorado, is this not a prove it series to both teams? Like you mentioned the caliber of quality in Dallas and Montreal. If you win this series, does this not make you feel vindicated and validated as a three-time champion? And like, if the Avalanche win, they feel like they defeated the back-to-back -back Stanley Cup champion. This is where things can begin. Right At the end of everything, do you not feel like that same emotion is going to be felt by whoever wins? Yeah, I, I think, you know, especially with all the people over the last two years, uh, dating back to the bubble, where a lot of people were saying, oh, this, you know, the Stanley Cup against Dallas was a fluke. And, and then a lot of other people say, well, you just ran into the Canadians at the right time, you know, right when they were at the end of the road of things. Um, I, I think in a way, yes, this will, you know, a cup is a cup is a cup. Uh, we've, yeah. we've spoken about this numerous times where, you know, you win a cup, you win a championship. It's a championship. You know, you could put all the asterisks next to it and make all the reasoning as to for why it's not. But uh, doesn't make the, 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 the journey there any less difficult. But I, I think, yeah, I think this will just be like the, the absolute cherry on top. Uh, not only just because it'll be a three-peat, but I think it will add an air of legitimacy towards this this run that Tampa's had over the last three years. I think that, especially against a team like Colorado, I think even if this was Tampa's first cup uh, in the span of three, I think the rest of the league would look at this and be like, all right, these guys are for real. And, and I kind of want to throw that question back to you guys. Um, would it feel any different if you guys were playing maybe the Rangers or, or the Leafs? Would it feel a little bit differently if, if you guys were playing any of those teams rather than the two-time defending Stanley Cup champions? Uh, I, I, I kind of agree with what you're saying. Is like If you win a Stanley Cup, it, it doesn't matter really who, that, who you went up against. Yeah, That's a legit champion. And it doesn't matter you know, if, if it's a shortened season, if it's in a bubble, you know, like – it's still difficult to, to win that. Yeah. So, and if, you know, you're going up against a team that made it there, they made it. Yeah. And, and that's who you have to go up against. Does it, like, if the abs are to come out on top of this against the Lightning, I think there's absolutely more of, uh, you yeah. know, a uh, 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 tip of the hat to the Avalanche for taking down, you know, the two time defending champions. Absolutely. So I, I, I do. I, I, I'm, I'm glad. And Kyle and I talked about this in a recent episode. I'm happy it's the lightning yeah. because that's, that's <laughs> the, that's the legitimate two time defending champion. That's who you want to take down. Yeah. This is, this is, this is what you want to see. This is what fans want to see. They want to see a team going for a three peat. And then from an avalanche standpoint, they want to be the team to prevent that. And like we were just saying, to be to be the team to now be on top because you took the team that was on top yeah. down. And Adam and I, you and you and I have even done when we do our power rankings at the beginning of the season. Yeah. We have this question all the time: Who's number one to start the season? Is it the yeah. team who made all the moves and goes into the season after you know a, a good draft or, or a good um, you know free agency period, or is it the Stanley Cup champion no matter what? Right. And we had that debate. And that's what the Avalanche want. They want to be, they want what the Lightning have for the past two years. Yeah. Go ahead. And, and honestly, like when you talk about the Lightning as the caliber opponent, like for the Avalanche, it's been 20 years, 20 plus years, and not too far removed from that, that bitter season where it rivaled one of the worst of all time. And to see this team and everything they put together, yeah, it would feel a little bit different if it was the Rangers or some outside shot like the Capitals ran the East or, like, you know, you finally, after all this waiting and all of the hurdles you had to overcome, you beat a team and then you're more 
spending the offseason defending the caliber of opponent. Yeah. Like, it takes away from that win a little bit. So for everything the Avalanche have been doing to this point, to have the opportunity to topple the back-to-back Stanley Cup champions, it really just solidifies everything they've done to this point. Because it's not about just this year. It's everything they've had to overcome to get here. Mm-hmm. And that really is what they're looking forward to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, let's hear from Rock Auto, and then let's talk individual players. Guys, we know they're going to be on the ice. Guys that are not, but could potentially be on the ice. Hmm. Uh, there's a lot to still get to. So, But first, Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts that you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand that their warehouse happens to carry. You have a computer and access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. It's a family-run business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. The prices are reliably low for every customer, so go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution to your auto parts needs. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in the how did you hear about us section so they know that we sent you to them. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com. So big questions going in for we'll start with like the injured players and for the Avalanche, it's Cogliano to a much bigger extent. It is Nazem Kadri. Um, and for the Lightning, the big one is Braden Point. Is there anybody else other than him? Is there somebody like maybe on like Cogliano's level, like a, like maybe a, a bottom six guy that the the Lightning are hoping comes back that can make an impact, or is it just Point? Is he the biggest <clears throat> fish, basically? I, I I think it's Point. I, I there there are some guys on the lower lines that are a little bit banged up right now, but there's not really any fear of them missing time. Uh, mm-hmm. It's more so our defensive core that is a little bit worrisome. Uh, Eric Chernak was a banged up quite a bit in that series against the Rangers, as was Ryan McDonough. So, you know, those are the guys you really don't want to see not be on the ice or go down the tunnel at any time, regardless of what time of the year it is. Uh, That that is something that I'm going to be curious to see. And I'm sure now your listeners are going to be able to see uh, wanting to see wanting to see actually (laughs) Uh, just because those guys are so vital to what the lightning do and, and that is just playing a 200 foot game because when they're able to do that and especially play well in the neutral zone, it opens up everything for them on all, on all aspects of the game. So, you know, having those guys on the ice as well as having their defensive core uh, rolling on all fronts, that's going to be very important for them as for Braden point. It was a little concerning during the Ranger series. He skated a couple of times. He took a nasty spill at some point Uh, actually falling into the boards, risking possibly hurting himself even more. But what we've heard from John Cooper, as well as just seeing video online, it seems like Point is starting to get back to what he was. I wouldn't be really, I I wouldn't be surprised if we see him miss a couple of games. I would think if he's going to come back, if at all, it's going to be during games, maybe four or five. Um, But we'll have to Hmm. see. It depends, obviously, on how he feels as well as, you know, when John Cooper wants to maybe take that risk and, and bring him in. And, you know, because what we saw in the Ranger game in game six, uh, Ryan Strom, he, Gerard Gallant started Ryan Strom and then he missed pretty much the rest of the game. And then you were you were missing one forward. Uh, so John Cooper definitely doesn't want to be in a position like that. Um, and then, yeah, so Braden Point, we'll see. It's he's not I don't. I, it would, I would love to have him on the ice, but I think that this team has played so well without him to where they've been able to adjust things where it's not going to be a big, big issue for them to be able to get things going against Colorado. And then the guy I'm very interested to hear about on your side of things is Nazem Kadri. What have you guys heard about him uh, since he well, missed time against Edmonton? I'm going to throw on my Nazem Kadri gloves. <laughs> <laughs> I've been He's waiting to channel true. him. Yeah. I was waiting to see so, when Chris was going to bring those out. <laughs> yeah. So there they are. And I'm, I'm summoning uh, the powers that be to <laughs> me. I don't know if that's got some healing powers in it. So um, there you go, Nas. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't. 
did you say you don't think Braden Point's coming back until game four or five? Was that I would what, I that... would ex- I would expect probably four or five. I'd be okay. I wouldn't be surprised if it's three, but if he comes back around you know that four or five area, I'm o- I'm okay with it. Uh, because I, I think if the Avalanche are smart, um, I I don't think they bring Kadri back until about that time. I'd say like the middle games, three, four, or five. Yeah, if he's ready to go, knowing Nazem Kadri. Uh, he's going to want to be out there in game one. Yeah. And I, and I don't know. I, I'm so torn. Like, And even I think Nazem Kadri is smart uh, of, of saying, like, I don't want to hurt my team. Yeah. But I don't want to miss an opportunity to play in the Stanley Cup final either. Yeah. So it'll be really, really. If he's in on game one, he is not, not going to be anywhere near 100%. Um, and even, you know, he, from what I understand, even up till till Tuesday, he wasn't gripping a stick. Yeah. So that's kind of important. So I've heard to play hockey. So I don't know. I don't. I don't think he's he's ready to go. But is he just going to try to muscle through it? That's a big risk. I, I don't know. I don't see him playing game one. Kyle disagrees with me. I do. I just I have this weird feeling about the the messaging from Bednar around this injury and not ruling him out still. Um, and just his efforts all year long, like Nas has made it a point to not get suspended in these playoffs, clean up his game, make it to the finals and be there for his team. If all that's in his way is a broken thumb, he's going to tape that bad boy up, stick it in a glove and just make it. Um, I I don't feel like he's going to let that get in his way when everything else has got in his way, his entire career. I don't think he's going to let a thumb stop him from helping his team win the Stanley Cup. So I feel like he's going to make an appearance in game one. I'm not speaking to his quality of play. I'm just talking about Nas and his determination and what he's already showed us, what he's going to do this year. I just have a feeling that he's going to try and play game one. It, we'll see. We, we shall see. And Cagliano is in the same realm. It's kind of like up in the air. Um, and both of those guys are clearly important. To their mm-hmm. team, you know what I mean? Especially Kadri. Um, yeah. you know, being you know, centering that second line and being on that first unit power play. Um, those are the the situations and what you're you're gonna need. You've needed them all year for that. So uh we'll we'll see. We'll see. If it's if it's not game one, I don't see him rushing back. Um, I think I just do. I think they're gonna be smart and say, like, let's just see how this goes. Yeah. If we're winning, then then heal up even more. If we're we're losing and we're down a couple games, all right, maybe we throw you in there to to see what you can do. Maybe you know ignite something. I don't know. We'll see. Um, you know, another big thing that everybody's going to be watching is you know, like as far as Avalanche goes, you know, in in round one it was Kale McCarr and Roman Yossi. You know, the, the two of the better de- defensemen in the league. Clearly, Victor <clears throat> Hedman is in, in in that category. So that's what everybody's going to be watching. For this one, um, they're two different, you know, built mm-hmm. players. Victor Hedman is, you know, like Andre the Giant, <laughs> and Kale McCarr is maybe who? Kyle? Ray Mysterio. Oh, or, or, or <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, Hedman's playing well, right? Yeah. I mean, is he? We we came out with Bet Online had the uh, who's going to score the most points? Yeah, for the for the uh, Stanley Cup final. McCarr was incredibly third overall in terms of odds, but Hedman was on there too. I think he was maybe seven ish, which is nothing to sneeze at. Like people look at his defense and rightly so he from, from a purely defensive standpoint, he's probably the best in the league. Mm-hmm. What's yeah. he, what's he bring to this team, man? Like what, <clears throat> what, what do they rely on him for? Uh, leadership, really, that's where it starts. You know, obviously, Steven Stamkos wears the C, but at the end of the day, I think really, you know, with, with the amount of time that we've seen Stammer miss over the last couple of years, the buck has really stopped with with Hedman and how this team reacts to things. And and you could see it, you know, it's, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a sort of in a way, almost an un, unorthodox dynamic that this team has where, yeah, you have a captain who's been there forever. But there's like this group, this small group of veteran players where it's kind of like, I kind of look at it as like the, the, the Illuminati of the Marvel universe. <laughs> it's just all these guys just having the last say on everything. But 
Uh, yeah, Victor Hedman. Other than that, uh, and and it's funny. It's very rare that you see, in some ways, especially from a defenseman, not only embody that leadership role which Hedman has, but embody it on the ice in all aspects. Uh, winning the Conn Smythe back in the tr- back in the bubble against the Stars, and, and really taking his offense. I mean, we the, his offensive level that we saw him take it to in the bubble was like absolutely insane, Chris Kyle. And, and he hasn't really had that kind of success the, the last couple of years in the playoffs, but still uh, his ability to spread out the ice, uh, you know, right now he has 14 points uh, and two goals in this playoff run mm-hmm. right now, which is insane. I mean, but that shows that how well this lightning team. Yeah, exactly. That's mm-hmm. how, sh- that's how much it, you could see how everybody else is playing well around him. And, and really, I think we're going to see some moments, I think, especially from Hedman, where, you know, he doesn't, you don't really know what he's thinking sometimes on the ice. He doesn't really wear his emotions on his sleeve like that. But I think a lot of the hype now with him and Makar, especially these two battling it out um, in the Stanley Cup final, I think there's going to be some kind of just letting you know I'm here moments between him and Makar. I would not be surprised if those two are on the ice and we see them get get a little uh, a little crazy along the boards. Hmm. Well, why don't we hear from Bet Online and then we'll discuss uh, a few things I want to get to is you know the the speed of the Avalanche or the yeah. Lightning afraid of that. Obviously the goalies, and then we'll do some predictions. So let's hear from All Bet right. Online first. All right, guys. Well, when you're and, and I, I'm talking to my listeners now. I'm, so when you're betting on the underdog lightning, because they are on the underdogs of this series, which is fine. Listen, we've been doubted before. You Say have that to one make... more time for, for the people in the back. <laughs> we've been <laughs> doubted before, Chris and Kyle. And when you're making your bets on the underdog lightning, all the props, all that, you got to make them at betonline.net because betonline.net is your number one source for all your sports betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, news, and odds, including this year's NBA Finals matchup, the NHL Stanley Cup Final, which we're talking about if you're just tuning in, uh, Major League Baseball, and of course, fighting news from the MMA and UFC to boxing. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game starts so yeah guys i i mean what you know we could make all the comparisons around the defenseman headman mccarr obviously that's the big one uh the one matchup and and i feel like this is a little lopsided in this way because obviously there's going to be a lot to be made about the goalie situation between our two teams but Mm -hmm. and, and chris knows how i feel about goalies in general Mm -hmm. but (laughs) but the one matchup i'm curious and how you guys view it in a way is the superstars on the forward lines, McKinnon versus Stamkos, Kucherov versus Landis Gog, vice versa. If you want to interchange those, um, where do you view those? Obviously I'm sure you'll view Land- Landis Gog and McKinnon having an edge in those, but what, how are you looking at those matchups? Uh, yes. uh, it's one of those that you're the experience versus honestly, the, just this speed. And determination yeah. and cohesiveness of Colorado, it's it's that matchup. I'm really interested to see how it plays out, not just in the first couple of games, but when the series is right there for the taking. Yeah, how those two matchups react because this is going to be the first time for the uh, the Avalanche in this scenario. It's one thing to get there; it's another thing to go home with the prize. And the Lightning know how to do that. So I would like to see Nathan McKinnon, and Gabe Landeskog not just do what they do, but continue to do what they do because they've had times where they take their foot off the gas. They, you know, they get a little trusting of lines two, three, and four, and no, they don't have to do it all, but there's nothing you need to leave out there on the ice. I want to see this avalanche team continue to push and it's who continues to push. If it's the experience or the determination, that's, that's what I want to see in this, uh, this series. Yeah. I think it's more than just, uh, Vasilevsky's an all world goalie and, and, that's that. No, like the, the lightning needs to to really get the avalanche off their game mm-hmm. uh, from from a defensive standpoint. And and can they do that? They have a great defense against a great avalanche offense. The avalanche through uh, and, and, you know, take this with a grain of salt because the, the Edmonton defense is, is nowhere near what Tampa Bay is, is. But the avalanche took advantage of that. Yeah. And every single game they had at least 40 shots on goal. So yeah, Vasilevsky can can you know win you games, 
where not many goalies in, in the league can, can really win a team games like he can. Uh, but does he crack at all? Uh, you know, it, it, it's not it's going to be easier said than done for the Avalanche. But I just feel like they can do it because they they have the speed to kind of to, to get around some Tampa Bay defenders. Uh, OK, but when then you do that, then you have under Vasilevsky waiting for you. So it it's, you know, two layers of a of a really solid onion that the Avalanche need to to peel through. But, you know, you, sh- you shoot 40 to 50 shots on goal. I like those chances. I really do. And and on the other end, it's going to be tough for the Avalanche because the Lightning have <laughs> offensive capabilities, too. So the for for. We don't know who the starting goalie is. I'm on Team Kemper and and Kyle's on Team Frankie, but um, I don't know. Either way, like they're gonna have to, they're gonna have to be Vasilevsky like they really are, and and, I, and that's why I think like Darcy Kemper <clears throat> is the man because I think he's more capable of doing that than yeah. than Pablo Francis is. So, um, but can the Lightning get the Avalanche off of their game, which is a high octane? constantly forcing the issue yeah get shots on goal make you make a mistake and try to take advantage of it that's going to be a question yeah i i think i agree with that that's going to be the big question mark uh in terms of style of play uh the lightning obviously in 2019 kind of the greatest show on ice as i like to call it Mm -hmm. uh ran ragged with their speed throughout the entire NHL. And then you've kind of seen this metamorphosis with this team over the last couple of years where they've gone from that, that run and gun style to slowing down the game because a lot of teams more times than not try to match them skate for skate uh, on that side. And, and we've seen that throughout this entire playoff run with the lightning where they thrive better in situations on the offensive side of things where if they just take it into the zone, they set up, they cycle the puck around, and they give it to Stamkos or Kucherov, especially Kucherov, who is really the, the point guard of this team. Uh, if they could allow to slow things down and, and make the Colorado Avalanche play their game, I think the Avalanche are going to have a hard time with that just because mm. of the ability Kucherov has. And, and we have so many guys, not even Kucherov and Hedman, we have so many guys that have the ability to just quarterback an offense to where I really think it's going to come down to, like Kyle said in a way, uh, the lower lines, the bottom six. Yep. Um, those bottom six, I mean, uh, the lightning third line has been made so much of the last couple of years, and now we have this complete almost rehaul of it. But this year they've been playing fantastic, not as electric as what we've seen in years past, but still uh, productive nonetheless. And I really think it's going to come down to those third and fourth lines because as I could speak, I could only speak to what I've seen from the Lightning this postseason. But that fourth line, especially with Perry and Belmar and Maroon, has really done wonders for this team. And I think if the Lightning are able to just slow things down and allow themselves to create traffic in front of Kemper or Francoise, uh, I think. Colorado is going to have an issue with that. And I think that's what scares me the most about this series. It scares me and it's exciting at the same time. We've seen how the Avalanche handle premier defensive talent. Round one, Roman Yossi up for the Norris, swept. Premier forward talent and Connor McDavid, we swept. We had those two aspects. But when you have a team that tried to take you out of your game, being St. Louis, that's where we dropped our two, our lone two games of the playoffs. Now we get both of those in the St. Louis style in the Stanley Cup Finals. So this is going to be a true test. It might come down to the goalies, but I would love to see what breaks first because it's going to be one of those that you hope Colorado's the team that can break first because I don't know if they can continue to hold off a lightning team with momentum. And that's where the experience comes in, and that's what Tampa has the upper hand in. I don't know. I, I'm just hoping the uh, you know the AARP cards are kicking in for the Tampa Bay Lightning. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah you know. kudos on getting P. Belmar to score. I so man, him, I love dude. him. One of one of the greatest one yeah. of the greatest signings from this offseason, other than yeah. than Corey Perry, was Belmar. Unbelievable player. Uh, without him, I don't know where the Lightning would be in the faceoff circle this year, really, because he has done a fabulous job for this team. He's, I mean, 
I just miss him, you know, keeping everybody loose and, you know, in yeah, the locker yeah. room, he's just a, a funny guy and um, he's not going to, you know, light the world on fire with, with his stats, yeah. but that's important. They, they didn't need him for that stuff. Yeah, uh, I, I do. I, I, I missed him. So, yep. and, and one, one thing I want to ask both of you is because Kyle brought it up and I totally forgot it until he actually said it. Uh, Lightning have only lost, I mean, the, the Avalanche have only lost two games. Uh, how confident are you with them in the face of adversity? Because, yes, they pretty much for the most part mm-hmm. dominated the Lightning in the regular season, uh, outscoring them 7-5, to five, winning one game in regulation as well as overtime. Uh, I doubt yeah. either team is even thinking about that right now because both teams were a little bit different at that point. Lightning were, I wouldn't say in shambles, but they were a shell of what they are right now. Um, but in the face of adversity, especially against an experienced team ha- against like the Lightning, are you how worried would you guys be in that kind of situation? Uh, this is something we've talked about <laughs> several times throughout the year. And and while they haven't really faced it in terms of a series coming down to the wire, uh, in in games throughout the playoffs, they've faced it, but they have faced everything that you can throw at them in the regular season. Yeah. Like you yep. name it, they have faced it and overcome it and won. So, um, yeah, like that, it's not, it hasn't carried over to like, you know what I'm saying? Like I haven't faced this a game seven, you know what I mean? So that, that, that's very real that they haven't done that, but there's been games that they've been behind in, in the playoffs. They've given up the, the first goal. I don't, I don't know. I don't have the exact number in front of me. Uh, I, I think there's maybe been only like one or two games this postseason where they've had the first goal. Wow. So they're always coming from behind in these playoffs but throughout the throughout the regular season uh they've won every which way you could possibly think of and i'm sure kyle was going to say something very similar to that yeah uh they they dropped an overtime loss game in january and then other than that had a perfect january like which and that what that you're talking that was the nashville game right the too many men game which was a bogus too many men on the ice (laughs) in overtime like it was it was nonsense so but. other than that, a perfect January. And then this is something me and Chris talk about literally after every game. If they do give up that first goal, we talk about it all the time. You never feel out of it. Mm-mm. Never. Yeah. You never feel like, oh, this is going to be one of those games. No, the Avalanche find ways to make it one of their games. And that's the thing I look forward to in this series is this is where you get tested. It's one thing to do in the regular season. And it gets inferior talent with like Nashville and what Edmonton, yeah. like that was a bad matchup, really. Like, you want to see what they could do. Like, and you you ask, like, how worried are we? I, I don't want to sound cocky here, but no, we're right. not. Yeah. Yeah. You're not right. because this team, if they have showed you, oh, well, they do this in this situation, we haven't seen that situation. So yeah. you're just going off of what they say and what they're doing right now. And that's good enough for me. Yeah, it's nothing against Tampa Bay. Yeah, yeah. but I, and Tampa Bay is as confident as the Avalanche are. Yeah, and I think that's where this is going to be a great series because both of these teams honestly believe that they can win. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And, and I did uh, locked on uh, sports today, and I, that's what I told them that I, I said like th- this is a matchup where it literally mm-hmm. can go either way. Mm-hmm. nobody yeah. knows where this thing can go and it's going to be there, there's going to teams are going to try to exploit things and it might work but the other team is so well prepared and and you know especially tampa bay they've been there before they'll fix if something's broken for them it will get fixed and probably before the end of the game not mm-hmm. not for game two or three whenever the case may be like you are going to have a back and forth in this series that it, this is this is going to be an exciting watch. It really, really is. Yeah. I think NHL fans are going to be in for a, a really good treat with this series because it's just going to go back and forth. It's Yeah, uh, I, I agree with that. I think this is good. You're going to see, I, I wouldn't say cocky, but there's going to be a ton of confidence oozing from both these teams, mm-hmm. especially in game one. And a listener actually reached out to me, and, and I didn't think about this until then, and then we could get into predictions real quick. Mm. How big, now obviously we all know by now, let's state the obvious, hockey is played indoors. But there's going to be certain elements in, in, the, in this series that are going to play a factor. The high altitude in Colorado. And then on the other side of that, it's been very well documented over the years, the, the quality of ice down in Tampa due to the humidity. Uh, <laughs> we yeah. won't get in. 
how yeah. <laughs> how how big of a factor do you think that's going to be for both teams? I think as at least from my guys' point of view in terms of the altitude, I think that I, I don't think it's going to be so much the altitude. It might be just because of the travel because we have to remember Lightning haven't traveled a whole ton over the last two Cup, Stanley Cup finals. So that back and forth might be a little bit of a challenge here and there. You might see a little bit of of, you know, of sluggishness in the first period of, of game one, especially. Um, and then on the other side of that, the, the, the ice quality at Amelie might play in favor of the lightning because we know how to play on it. We know what to expect, especially on certain bounces. And it might actually slow you guys down to a certain degree. Uh, you forget we played in Lake Tahoe. Thank which, you. Which, <laughs> yeah, I was about to say we played on a melting lake. Yeah, which we had to uh, refrain from playing for, what, nine hours? before. We I don't think that's going to be an issue this time. I don't think you're going to have to bring your scuba uh, gear for this one. <laughs> I, you know... The, at this time of year, like players adjust pretty well. Yeah. It, it, will there be? I, I don't think uh, the the first period. Uh, you, you mentioned you know the whole rust thing, which Kyle and I talked about like over and over again. Like I, I don't buy into that. Maybe in the first like couple shifts, but I just yeah. think you're going to see a a first period of uh, nobody wanting to. It's going to be like overtime, period yeah. one, because yeah. it's game one of the Stanley Cup Finals, there's going to be some nerves there, and nobody wants to make a mistake. Yeah. Um, and I don't think you're going to see, and, and maybe I'm wrong, I, you're going to see the high-octane avalanche offense in the beginning. I think they're just going to build up to that when they get their legs, the butterflies yeah. go away, and it, maybe it won't be the entire first period, but uh, maybe half the first period. But I think at this point in the season, teams know what to expect. If they don't like how the ice is, they'll, they, they adjust to it. And it, you know, with the altitude, with the lightning, by by game two, you're you're going to be adjusted to that too. So and you also need to think when it comes to the subject of ice quality. This is the dream matchup for hockey fans: Avalanche versus Lightning. First game on ABC slash ESPN. Mm -hmm. Do you really think Gary Bettman's going to let this dream matchup take place on this big network and then let ice get in the way? If that's going to be an issue before the game. It, there's some. It, this was an issue before. I think it was in the 2000 series between Dallas and Colorado with the ice. Something yeah. about like it being a melting issue, and like he was worrying about it. Like fast forward to where we are now. I really don't think ESPN wants to put on a product and say, "Hey, look, here's your championship. The ice is disgusting." I really feel like things might get adjusted there. Well, I only say the ice quality in Tampa because the Canadians, if you remember, uh, last year's yeah. final did did make a thing about it. Um, so I've and I've also <laughs> heard about it. We've we had the list. It wasn't the Lightning were a better team? It was it was the ice yeah. clearly. Right? <laughs> it was the yeah. ice. I mean, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right, but let's uh, let's get down to it because after we end this. We are no longer friends for the next couple of weeks. So I didn't uh, even know we were friends to begin with, guys. That's so. true. That's yeah, true. That's true. That's true. Ha ha. Got you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. Uh, all Straight right. Bullet. What do you got? Let's uh, let, let's throw out our predictions and uh, we'll, we'll start with Mr. Denker. Go for it. All right. So predictions for this series. You know, I, I was I was dragged through the coals by Ranger fans in the previous series saying lightning and five. So. I am gonna I'm gonna be a little re more reserved in this series and say lightning and six, uh, <laughs> and um, all right. I think that Steven Stamkos is gonna be the Conn Smythe Trophy winner. Okay, go ahead, Kyle. <sighs> uh, oh, Kyle is digging deep. I, Adam, <laughs> prepare yourself for this because Kyle likes to throw out some crazy things that that sometimes come true. So Avalanche and eight. <laughs> this again not being any kind of way i feel like avalanche in five wow mm. okay all right well this it I'm just has that, that feel that. yeah do you want to throw it a con smythe this is good uh off what we've seen so far in their play this is gonna be kale mccarr all right so I'll, I'll piggyback off what Kyle is saying of abs in five. And the only re and I'm not, that's not my prediction. Wow. I, I'm going to like hedge my bets here and say like my, my prediction here is like completely predicated on 
I, I can't stand when the best trophy in sports and the best celebration for that trophy in sports is is celebrated on on opposing teams ice. It still has meaning. It still has value. But it just means so much more when that is won on home ice. So because of yeah. that and only because of that, I will say abs in five or seven. So they win it on home ice. That's the only reason I'm saying that. Uh, and then take that for what it's worth. Con Smythe, this is Nathan McKinnon all over it. He mm. has been waiting for this moment. And when I said like the first period might be just like let nobody make a mistake, maybe pump the brakes a little bit, letter Kenny style, uh, he, he, he will not. Nathan McKinnon from – he'll be the only guy out there going – 125,000 miles an hour because he wants this so bad. And I know everybody out there wants it bad. But Nathan McKinnon is going to be a man possessed for five or seven games. Mm. Con Smythe. That's what I got. So uh, any last words before we wrap it up and uh, we never talk again or, or, or what? What do you got? Where, well, where can uh, people find you? Why don't we throw that out there? <laughs> Uh, they could find me at home thinking about that <laughs> that avalanche in five prediction that Kyle threw out. But uh, no, they could, you could find the show at LO underscore lightning on Twitter as well as locked on underscore lightning on Instagram. Give us a follow on YouTube. The channel is popping. Congratulations to you guys on making 1,000 subscribers. Mm, so, yeah. So congratulations beats. on that. So, uh, yeah. And then give me a follow at the mixtape on Twitter. Yes. Danky Dank, D E N K Y D A N K. Uh, and yeah, it's going to be a great series. I'm excited to see, uh, just the, the NHL level video game level of talent that we are going to see in this series. And, and yeah. uh, like I said, and where, on, uh, on, uh, locked on sports now, like th- these games will not be over until triple zeros are on the scoreboard. Yeah. No Absolutely. team will be out of this. No. And like we said with the number or the game number one in uh, Edmonton, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, no lead was safe. Yeah. It could hold true for this series too. And uh, where can my listeners follow, uh, find you guys? Uh, our show is on Twitter, L O P N underscore Avalanche. Twitter, uh, in, Locked On Avalanche on Instagram. Obviously, on our YouTube channel, search for uh, Locked On Avalanche. And uh, you can find Kyle at, at Shaggy Von Doom everywhere you man. look. That's my man. So. All right. Uh, I just think if the Rangers had won that game six, like we we would not be having a game right now. So yeah, I guess thank in some aspect, thank you, Lightning. So thank you, you thank you, Lightning. Yeah, yeah. I, you, I, uh, you got I, nothing I, for that. No. <laughs> 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 just take the compliment and shut up. Thank you. All right, everybody. Uh, <laughs> we, we will be doing crossovers uh, throughout these uh, Stanley Cup finals. So uh, this is not the last you've seen of, of Danker. So go Bolts. Um, or us. Go Bolts. Enjoy. It's going to be fun game one. Uh, <laughs> and we'll be back tomorrow to talk about it all. all right, everyone, thank you for making this your first listen of the day. Always yeah. appreciated. Uh, he's Mr. Mixtape Adam Denker for Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan, and I am Chris Maselli. Enjoy game one, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.